सबसे आखिर मैं फिर से वही एक मैं पॉइंट आउट करना चाहूंगा कि ये सारे स्किलिंग के एफर्ट में इंडस्ट्री का रोल इंडस्ट्री का प्राइवेट सेक्टर का सबका रोल बहुत महत्वपूर्ण है जो स्किलिंग हम कर रहे हैं वो स्किलिंग नॉट फॉर द सेक ऑफ स्किलिंग बट टू मीट द रिक्वायरमेंट्स ऑफ द इंडस्ट्री इस अलाइनमेंट को लाने के लिए आईटी सेक्टर में तीन सेक्टर स्किल काउंसिल इंडस्ट्री सामने आई है उन्होंने बनाई है और उसको हम पूरा सहयोग देते रहे और देते रहेंगे आई टी आई टी सेक्टर स्किल काउंसिल टेलीकॉम सेक्टर स्किल काउंसिल और इलेक्ट्रॉनिक सेक्टर स्किल काउंसिल सर मुझे ये बताने में बड़ा खुशी है कि सर बाकी सब सेक्टर स्किल काउंसिल के मुकाबले में ये तीनों सेक्टर स्किल काउंसिल ने बहुत अच्छा काम किया है सब जगह इन्होंने देश भर में अपने एक साल डेढ़ साल के अंदर अपने ट्रेनिंग सेंटर्स ट्रेनिंग पार्टनर्स बना लिए हैं और ट्रेनिंग शुरू कर दी है और जो हमारा बहुत ही महत्वाकांक्षी ह्यूमन रिसोर्स डेवलपमेंट स्किलिंग डेवलपमेंट का स्किल इंडिया का जो लक्ष्य है उसमें आने वाले समय में भी इन सेक्टर स्किल काउंसिल की बहुत महत्वपूर्ण भूमिका रहेगी उसका उस कार्य में भी आप लोग का सहयोग इस अवसर पर मैं अनुरोध करना चाहूँगा सो फ्रेंड्स थैंक यू वेरी मच धन्यवाद सर इतनी सरलता से इलेक्ट्रॉनिक्स के क्षेत्र में चलाए गए स्कीम्स के बारे में समझाने के लिए मे आई नाउ इन्वाइट श्री तपन रे एडिशनल सेक्रेटरी डिपार्टमेंट ऑफ इलेक्ट्रॉनिक्स एंड आई टी टू स्पीक अफ यू वर्ड प्लीज Honorable Minister of Communications, Information Technology, Law and Justice, respected uh, Secretary IT, Joint Secretary, MD of NILIT, participants in today's uh, national level workshop organized by NILIT and friends. I'll be very brief because most of the details have been done, so I'll be touching only very general issues. I won't go into details. First thing is we must uh, focus in today's uh, workshop as a, what can be an opportunity to move ahead in the area of skill development. Lot has been said about the achievements of NILIC, which is good. Large number of statistics have been said. But ultimately, it is the outcome which is important, and I am sure today's workshop will be an opportunity to go further ahead as a as a platform for all stakeholders in this area who have come from all over India in the field of skill development. As we all know that our Honorable Prime Minister has a vision of uh, digital India and we must, uh, in line with this thinking, forge ahead in the Digital India program. But Digital India's success lies to a great extent on the capacity building which is to be done so that the uh, ultimate outcome of Digital India has achieved, and I am sure today's workshop should go a long way in that direction. The biggest challenge uh, nowadays in the contemporary public policy is the challenge of growth and development. There is a lot of discussion on the percentage of growth, how much will India grow by 4, 5%, 6%, 10%, double digit, single digit. Now the key lies in having a sustainable growth, inclusive growth. Because growth without including the sections of society would have no meaning. And this is an area where I think IT can play an important role for inclusive growth that percolates to the last man in the economy. Now what determines growth? We all know that growth is a function of labor and capital. It is how efficiently you transfer the labor and capital into production is that determines growth. Now, technology is very important in conversion of labor and capital into production. Societies, economies which are efficiently converting the labor capital into production have higher growth rates. So, this is an area where we must focus on where productivity of both labor and capital can be increased. So coming to the issue of productivity of labor, this is where skilling is important. Skilling has been tried in the past, but it has been done in a disjointed manner. 
what requires is focus skilling, working backwards what the industry wants and what we should train our people to do so that we not only provide labor force which is skilled for the domestic economy but also a skilled labor force for the export economy. So Digital India is a step in that direction which aims to increase the efficiency of the economy by increasing the efficiency of conversion of labor and capital. And as you all know, information technology is a great leveler, especially uh, in, in uh, making processes more efficient. Creating infrastructure alone through digital India may not be sufficient. It is a necessary condition, but not sufficient. So we must concomitantly create the adoptive capacity of the economy to convert all the good infrastructure which we plan to create into benefit for the common man. That only can improve the quality of life of, of our people. So technology in that sense must promote equity and inclusive growth. In that sense, if we see information technology should ideally be a public good. As we all know, public good is a concept where it should be non-exclusive and non-rivalrous which means a person should be able to enjoy the public good without having to be excluded from it or whether his enjoyment does not reduce the enjoyment of others. Now that is a very difficult proposition because currently information technology does not fall in the, strictly in the category of a classic public good. There are exclusions in that sense, but we must in the long run strive to make it a public good so that every person has access to information technology. In this context, our Honorable Prime Minister's 3S program, which is skills, speed and scale, become extremely relevant. That is stress on capacity building of the economy, stress on the capacity building of our labor force, skilling the labor force adequately to derive, as, as was mentioned, the demographic dividends. We all know that we have a young population with two thirds of the population being below 35, which can be a huge opportunity for not only India but also for the export market. Now, this is an ambitious uh, program, but we must strive towards it so that the young population becomes skilled and dividends does not become a liability in the long run. We must also need to address the last mile connectivity because uh, ultimately it is the Last mile, which is the most difficult one. And uh, we must strive to uh, find out ways by which we can uh, reach the scaling to the last point, which may be in the local vernacular language and also for relevant to the local needs. In this uh, context, I think the public private mode is a very good uh, concept, and I'm happy that there's a lot of industry participation in this workshop. And we must move ahead with the PPP mode because government alone cannot do this gigantic task. Well, whereas India has this comparative advantage in information technology, it must be leverage to our greatest uh, to our greatest benefit. I'm sure the workshop will address all the key issues relating to the vision which is envisioned in the Digital India campaign and come up with practical solutions so that we really come up with the issue which can be actually workable, practical on the ground instead of being theoretical. So the best practices from not only India but from other countries should be emulated so that it becomes actually a practical uh, concept. The focus should be on outcomes rather than outputs. I think uh, MD read up a lot of statistics, those are outputs, but we must ultimately convert the outcome so that actual benefit reaches the people at large. So I am very happy that this workshop is being done to facilitate digital India's uh, promotion to the villages. And we must work uh, shoulder to the wheel, must redouble our efforts. Whatever we have achieved is enough, may, may be good, but that's not sufficient. We must make an order of magnitude change. The order of magnitude change comes in terms of redoubling, quadrupling, even much bigger targets have to be set, much bigger achievements have to be done. Otherwise, the 
target of reaching the digital India will become a little difficult to achieve unless we begin with a very, very high level of redoubling. I am very grateful that our Honourable Minister is present to encourage us, to motivate us for this workshop and I am sure this workshop will be a good success in this August present. Thank you very much. Thank you, sir, for enlightening us about the various schemes of the department. While taking forward the National Digital Literacy Mission and Digital India Campaign of the Government of India, NIAT has taken a step further to sign an MOU with Intel India to jointly conduct courses and online examination on digital literacy as well as web NIAT's courses on electronic system design and manufacturing so as to align with the industry requirement. The MOU is not only a historic step forward for taking digital literacy program to greater heights, but is also a key milestone in furthering the vision of government which has envisaged the National Digital Literacy Mission and Digital India Campaign. With the permission of the chair,